All right, so here's what we got going on this morning. A 60 foot Cantus starboard pod is shot internally. It's been dripping, that's actually oil that's full of water. And we got the props off on this side. We're gonna be removing this whole pod, the whole thing. It's coming out and we're getting a new one. It's being shipped in from Sweden. The thing all told, I guess, with the shipping container and everything is over 1,500 pounds and it's roughly $7 a pound. Somebody do the math and tell me how much that is just for freight. Air freight over here goes through customs and then it finally makes it way down to us and we can put it in. Quite the process. Michael here is going to be pulling both props and he's going to be draining both of these. The props are going to get stripped down, the old props will be taken off, and then they're going over to Prop Doc, my buddy. He's going to dyno them and make sure they're straight. Yeah. That's what we're doing. Michael has already got all the props off, fast, fast, and now he's getting ready to drain the oil. He has to pull, I don't know if you can see it, but there's a plug right there, back there. He's got to pull that. I guess we better put new zincs on this side, so I'll have to order a zinc, and we have to pull these out. Got some oysters. It's going to drain as much as it drains. Yeah. Might have to get some kind of, I had some, I don't know where they're at. I can't find them, but I had the long Allen wrench socket with the socket end. So you could hook it up to a ratchet, but I don't know where they're at. I can't find them. So I ordered another set. They're on their way. They'll be here Sunday. Let's see if this is going to work. So Volvo sent us the cradle down for the IPS, which is the pods that Volvo makes for the boats. We have one over there, 3D. It's already hauled out. It's leaking and it's all full of salt water. So we're going to pop these off. Mel's doing that right now. We're going to open this up and we're going to get the forklift and get this loaded up and start dropping the old pot out. All right, I'm going to move my truck. AJ, you need to move your Jeep. And we are going to get the forklift out and get this ready to roll. <laughs> oh, Mel. Claire? On the other side. No, 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 no. I don't want it at all. All right. AJ's not, foot is not under there, right? Right. Okay, we can set it down. Wait, no, no, back up. I don't want the sawhorse under there. It's, it's not going to work. This is going to hold it, it doesn't look like. Yeah, it will. Crank it down some. Brand new. Yeah, it's brand new. It's 1,500 pounds. Take the block of wood out. Now I'll set it down. All right. Greatest. Sawhorse back. Okay. All right. So this is how it looks. That's what it's supposed to look like. It's That's the bottom. Out. This face is yeah. out. Yeah, this side and this side faces away from it. So that. Yeah, so the, the skag on the drive goes in that trough in the bottom. Yep. Tilt forward. You're going to get us in trouble by our, for using a wood as a hammer. It's a wooden hammer. That's what we say. We get the job done. I don't know what that's for. At first I thought maybe it was like a backstop. Does that go right down in that trough? It does. Oh, well, that's for the, for the skag. skag. That's for the skag. This is the two bolts for it. You probably have to wait until it's in to put that in. Yeah, just for the adjustment. And then this must lock something somehow. So we got some spare parts here that we don't know what they're for. Yeah, not we so got an well. extra locking ring and whatever that little guy is. He was in the box too, but I'm not sure about that. What do you guys think? Just I think it's going to work. Not. Houston, we got a problem? I think we're going to have to move the boat. Yeah, I think so. We're going to head up top and we're going to start breaking down all the accessories off the drive. Okay, while well, you wait for the stand yep, to be moved? Yep. First step would be to take these hydraulic lines off zip tie them up here so they're not leaking all over the place. Take these two bolts out and there's two more on the other side facing down and then you got to take these four bolts out right here. That'll get you into the little drive shaft. Then you have to disconnect that. It's just like a standard little drive shaft with U-joints. Make sure we inspect the U-joints for the wear and then all this stuff. Make sure power is secured. Make sure it's not hot. Uh, then this has to come off. The exhaust has to come off. At that point in time, that's when we start having to figure out getting the cradle in here because then you start these big bolts all the way around. They all have to be loosened up. So you could take out like all of them except for six, like one, I two, these. three, four. Some of these. Yeah. And then once we get the cradle position, then we can uh, make it eight bolts, leave eight bolts sure. in. Yeah. That ring is actually not part of the pod. It clamps it in there and the big O-ring is inside there. And we take all of these out, right? Leaving the last little bit. 
this would be disconnected, all the control cables, yep. all the fluid, the exhaust, boom. So we separate the, everything coming into it. Get this ready to drop it once it's supported. And Take what, the bolts out the rest of the way. Oh, so there's one on the outside and one on this side? Well, it clamps, this attaches to the pod. And then the pod's on the outside of the boat. Yep. And the big O-ring's in there? I got you. Yeah. I just needed to um, have a visual look. Yep. One O-ring on each, one of those big fat O-rings, yeah. one on each side. Yeah. And if we get this off today, it'll be a miracle. Well, it's broken, we just send it. <laughs> yeah. Just have it hang by one bolt and just keep turning it. Exactly. Bang! Boop. Bye, Felicia! Can't send back anyway. You said wrenches can't be used as breaker bars. Yes, I have a breaker bar. Yes, there is a tool, the right tool for every job. But in all fairness though, this little technique actually works really well when you're trying to break loose something and you only have about that much space to move and you can get that in there. That's oh, yeah. something up there behind the front somewhere. Do you know, when we put this back in, do these couplings have to be laser lined? There you go using that fancy word. I don't, I don't know. know what that means. <laughs> Are you talking about testing clearances? No, to, to get the centers of the shafts within the tolerance, yeah. you use a laser on each shaft to position them before you tighten these bolts because these are um, torque clutch plates. I think that's what it looks like, but I'm not 100% sure. Because the, the pod on the bottom is what turns, right? Yeah. Not anything up here. No, but okay. All right. just so, so you can have it. So it doesn't have to be laser lined up, but as a huge one. My underwear's sticking out. Are you about to start videoing? Yeah, no, you're already good. My underwear's sticking out. No. <laughs> I, got that. I already got that on film, too. Nice. What are you doing back there? Just connecting the exhaust. It's got two, four, six bolts. Just connecting the connectors and lubrication lines. Slowly but sure. You're almost ready to take it out, Chris? Almost. Damn, those are long. Yeah, I mean, it's got to go all the way through the hole and then into the bottom because there's a ring here. What it actually does is part of the hole comes out. There's like a lip that this sits on. But when this drops out, this stays in here. And then just think of this as the, like, kind of a, a ring that sits on top of it that sandwiches it together with two O-rings. Creating like a seal? Yeah, the two O-rings create a seal. And then this is what actually holds the pod in the boat. So like y'all have been seeing before, we're getting this pod ready for removal. So as we are setting up the forklift downstairs, we took out eight of the bolts. So then when he's got a supporter, we're gonna take out the last eight. And this is the wet exhaust coming in. We just took off because it kind of comes around, blocks these bolts and will actually kind of hinder this dropping through uh, retaining bracket up here, that silver piece right there that goes around. Should separate from the shaft here. All we gotta do is just move it back right out. Once we get it supported, move it back about a half inch, come right off, and it'll drop right out. And then put the new one in. Easy peasy. All you gotta do. All right, so we're back. This boat just got back from the Bahamas, so it's a little bit of a disaster. But I just hooked up to this unit. This is a salon unit. They said, I, I was here yesterday, and they said it's tripping out on high pressure, but I'm looking at our gauges right now. That's acceptable for me. So I'm not sure what's going on with that. And then this one's tripping the circuit breaker. I changed this switch out. That's the high pressure switch because it was setting high pressure. I changed that switch out yesterday, but it's now it's tripping the breaker, or it did trip the breaker yesterday too. So I'm going to pull this off, and we're going to check the start components. It's got glue in it. Remember, with these capacitors, always short them out first, because otherwise you'll get stung and it hurts. Take a picture of the wiring just so I can easily put everything back together. It's not too hard to remember, but better safe than sorry. So black, white, white, orange, and black. <clears throat> So it says right there, can you guys see that? Let me see. It says right there, 30 microfarads plus or minus 5%. So let's see what we're reading. Put that right there. You guys have seen me use this before. It's just a uh, capacitor tester. You can use a multimeter, but this one, I like it because it actually shows you what's going on. So it's good. It's, oh, look at this. Might not be any good. No, nope. it's good. I just didn't have good connection. Now let's take this little guy right here. So this is a little start assist they have on here with the clips on because that's not magnetic, I guess. Hmm. Okay, I hope I have one of these in my truck. I think I do. It says short. And yeah, I made sure the circuit breaker was off before I started. Let's run up to the truck and see if I have one of these start assists. There's Mel. Check in on him real quick. <laughs> what you working on? A automatic bilge pump put in where the 
bell thruster is. All right, well, if you need me, I'm running up the truck to see if I got some parts. Okay. Okay, I'm back. We're gonna put this thing up and see if we can get her to go. Double check my picture. Yeah, so you see I'm sweating kind of heavily. You gotta make sure that when you're sweating, you don't get any drips on the circuit board because it'll blow the board. Let's fire that up and see what happens. Has a octaplex. Boom. Okay, so my red power light's now on. You see that up there? And we'll see if this unit's gonna run. I think I'm gonna run down to the stateroom and check that real quick. Green means it's on. All right, so it's running. This is 404. This is more like the refrigeration instead of air conditioning. Complaint was that this unit isn't cooling enough, but I found that the sight gauge right here was pretty much empty. My low side was way low. With these units, you have to be careful because there's so much line set on them that it's very difficult to service. That's why they put this sight gauge in there. So we're going to um, add some more refrigerant. Oh man, it is hot in that little room right there. The exhaust fan that's right there isn't working. So we have to change that out too. So the refrigerant in there, I don't know if you can see it. It's probably really hard to see. There's refrigerant in there and it's slowly coming up. I like to see just a couple little bubbles up on top so that you can see it flowing. Because if you fill it all the way full, then it's very difficult to tell if it's full or all the way empty. The good thing is that that little thing in the middle, that little dot is like lime green color. That means that there's no moisture in the system. If it was yellow, it means there's water in there. Water in there is bad. It's full all the way. I know you guys can't see any bubbles in there, but I can see the flow. So we're gonna let this run. We're gonna disconnect from this one, and I gotta go get on another one. Well, I guess the captain of this boat and I think a lot alike. I have the same sign in my garage. So I have to go, here, let me show you. This is where I'm at, and I gotta go way down there. This is not meant to be fun. Oh, yeah, but this whole bottom, you see all that stuff? It's all salt. So I don't see a salt water leak anywhere, but it's coming from somewhere. So let's get these gauges hooked up. Red and blue. <laughs> Suction and discharge. You all right? Yeah. Uh, we'll make this easy sometimes, that's for sure. Let's back up a little bit so we can have some room on the hose. You gotta hook it up, open it up, and then turn it upside down. Yeah, open that little valve, on inline valve. You open the green handle, right? Okay, now turn it upside down. Let me make sure it's, if I got refrigerant coming or not. All right, I'm good. Now we gotta watch the sight gauge and just put some refrigerant in here. Not a lot of fun, but jobs like this that make me wonder sometimes. So I'm just slowly adding refrigerant. Hey, look to the right of that door. You see those four temperature gauges? Uh, yeah. What do they say? Left one, the first one says 15, the second one to the right says 51. The one to the bottom left says 48, the one to the bottom right says 37. See what the pressures are? Yeah, I'm doing okay. We're getting there. I don't know why they're low. This one's brand new, so they may not have got the service quite right when they put it in. I didn't see any signs of leaks. The only way to really perform a true leak check on these units is to vacuum the charge out of them and then pull a vacuum and check because the line set is so long because it goes around these big freezers around the outside of the freezer and then they put insulation around the coils, spray foam insulation and you can't get to them so you can't really leak check it and let it sit for overnight or something. So what we did in this case, we're going to top them both off. The boat's going to be here for a month. We will monitor the situation. If they both drop again, then we have to start hunting for a leak, which can be with these units and the way they're rigged up in these boats can be a huge disaster, especially when you have to work in a spot like this. Have those temperatures come down any? No, I don't want them. Nothing changed yet. Oh, my dot is green. That's a good sign. It means there's no moisture in there. Close the green valve on the bottle, close the little valve on the line, and then you can disconnect it. Coming out. All right, I'm running up to the truck to scrounge some parts. They're gonna move it one slip over, and then we will start uh, having him change the oil. I'm still had to order some parts for the refrigeration. I'll verify when I get back to the boat. I'm walking back now. Oh, I remember this. That's a total pain in the because you have to like rewire the whole thing. Uh, okay, I have, I really don't want to do that because it's in a terrible location. I'm going to try to find uh, one of those displays somewhere. I hate to ask, do you know anywhere that has them? Oh, geez. Okay, let me see what I can figure out. I'll call you back if I have to go the, your route. One of the captains told me that he's going to lock me on the boat and not let me leave. 
I said not a chance. All right, so I changed the start assist out. This check good, but it's still tripped the breaker. So I'm gonna put this on there. This is just the way it helps this compressor start up a little slower with less amp draw. So we're gonna plug this in. It just goes across the run capacitor. So I was on the dock working and met a new client and got paid the biggest compliment I've probably ever had. The guy said that as a business owner, I was one of the most professional people that he's ever dealt with. He liked the way I did business and I was just straightforward with it. Spent some of his money, but I was honest with him and just said, hey, you don't need this. This is not good anyways, so it's not going to make any difference if I put the inject the epoxy into the air conditioner. It's not going to fix the problem. So it made me feel pretty good. Some days you win, some days you don't. So just give you a quick update on a couple things. One, the polar is almost done. I'm doing all the electrical first. I'm not going to hang the engine. Then it's going to my buddy Sayel at Marine Clean to uh, get the top side all buffed out and cleaned up and looking good. Then once that's done, we'll hang the engine, get that all set up. Then hopefully you'll be seeing us shortly out on the water. The next thing is sometimes you get a phone call and you're like, Matt, what are you doing with all that oil? So these are all five gallon buckets of Shell Rotella 15W40. Got a phone call from a guy. First off, I needed 10 five gallon buckets to do an oil change on a Viking. I called my buddy. I said, hey, I need this oil. And he's like, Matt, I got this deal for you. And then I said, well, hang on, you got more? He's like, yeah, I got a whole bunch more. And I said, okay, let me talk to the client that wants the oil change. Maybe I can sell him another oil change in the future and I'll just buy it all and I'll pass on some of that savings to the client. So needless to say, we got uh, 22 gallons of oil, or no, I'm sorry, 22 buckets of oil. And I'm not gonna tell you how much it was, but it was definitely worth it. In fact, they have, I think, 40 more buckets I might buy some of those too and put them in storage. So we will see, because we do go through it. Uh, I'm gonna figure out right now where I'm gonna put some of this oil. Let's check the container. There might be room in here. Are you gonna have a new address pretty soon? Yep, we should. I'm going to pick up the lease today so we can review it. It'll be a bigger, better shop, more room. Hopefully you have enough room to have clients bring their small boats to us on a trailer. Yeah, and cheaper. When we move, we're gonna be selling this container. So if you know anybody that might want it, know how to get a hold of us. They are quite the hot commodity down here in Key West. I just think we used to have eight of them. Yep, and we sold all of them. Mel, good morning. Hey, sir. How are we doing? I don't know about we. Wow, what are we doing sure. for all this? Crazy. I think I'm gonna go. Uh... <laughs> go. Mel's like, I'm not having anything to do with 22 buckets of oil. <laughs> well, let me go somewhere else. <laughs> Put these right here. Uh, it can be for almost any engine, oh, okay. except for a Volvo. Oh. Volvo takes their own oil. Of course, the young man shows up right after we get done unloading all the buckets into the container. Go figure, huh? Hey. Nice hey. job, AJ. Timing, baby. <laughs> <You're welcome. laughs>